They own a hotel called Casa de la Juderia. It's a beautiful hotel situated in Barrio Santa Cruz in the center of Seville, just a short walk from the Giralda, from the uh, Cathedral of Seville. My mother is also a Brazilian princess, Princesa Maria de Gloria Orleans Braganza. So I've also got Brazilian royalty amongst other royalties there. <laughs> Uh, my father being Serbian and uh, there's Greek, there's uh, Danish, there's a bit of everything. My grandfather, King Peter II, the last king of Serbia, of Yugoslavia, was exiled. Him and his, uh, his wife, Queen Alexandra, they moved around and they ended up in London. And they took residence in the Claridge's Hotel uh, for a few months where, where my father was born. And Churchill designated the room 212 where, she was, where they were staying as, as Yugoslav territory for the, for the day. You have to be suited and booted from morning to, to evening for the classes. And you, you learn everything from accounting, financing to HR to... Um, to uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoints, cooking as well, you know, housekeeping, the baby, housekeeping front uh, office, front office, everything. I'm Farah Shamas. Welcome to Hotel Talk. We hope you enjoy listening to this friendly conversation between people connected by real life in hotels. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to what is going to be a really, really interesting hotel talk today. So the gentleman I have with me, um, we actually met at St. Raphael Resort and Marina. He was staying with us and his beautiful family, and he is quite well known in the world. He is none other than Prince Philip Karadjordjevic, um, who is the hereditary prince of Serbia and Yugoslavia. And most importantly, he's a lovely gentleman, an extremely kind family man and an amazing finance asset manager who is very into Bitcoin. So do look him up for that side as well. Uh, Prince Philip, thank you so much for being with us here today and for sharing some of your pearls of wisdom. Hi, Farhan. Good to be here. Thank you so, good so to much. See, good to see your face again from... Um, from uh, Cyprus. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, we're, we're really looking forward to welcoming you back again. And uh, most importantly, little Prince Stefan, who was the star of the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be back. He had a really good time at your, oh, at your bless lovely him. hotel. <laughs> bless him. He's amazing. He's amazing. Really, what a polite, lovely little boy. Thank you. So congrats to you and Dana for bringing up such a star. Um, now, what people don't really know about you so well is your connections to hotels. So obviously, um, you're from this amazing and very well-known family. However, your family has some great ties with hotels all across Europe, really. So maybe maybe you want to tell us a little bit um, about that and about your connection and how you studied even sure. hotel management. Sure, of course. So where do I start? I can start that uh, my mother and stepfather in Spain, they live in Sevilla in the south of Spain in Andalusia, and they own a hotel called Casa de la Juderia. It's a beautiful hotel situated in Barrio Santa Cruz in the center of Seville, just a short walk from the Giralda, from the uh, Cathedral of Seville. And it's a beautiful hotel. They've owned it for, uh, I don't know how many years, but since uh, since the early uh, late 80s, early 90s. They actually owned other hotels as well across um, two others in Sevilla and one other in Cordoba, but they sold those in the last uh, 10 or 15 years. And they've kept their, their original Hotel Sevilla, which is, uh, I believe, 134 rooms. It's, it's a beautiful, it's, it actually started much smaller and they built it um, no, they, they, sorry, they didn't build it. They, they renovated the buildings around the, the central building. And all the buildings are old, old school, typical Spanish Andalusian Sevillano uh, buildings in the old Jewish quarter. That's why it's Casas de la Juderia, the name, uh, House of the Jews. And it's done in a very traditional Andalusian style. There's many different patios, corridors, um, uh, walkways and and every room is different not one room is the same and now there's 134 rooms it's it's really is a beautiful hotel so it's almost like a little village exactly there's a tunnel there's a couple of tunnels i forgot to mention there's a couple of tunnels it's also connected to a spa that's not really managed by us but it's it's uh it's there with our hotel we have a restaurant as well and 
some function meeting rooms and lovely bar, the piano bar, where we have a really good pianist playing there most evenings. It's 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 fantastic. It's really it really is um it's it's a special hotel. That sounds amazing. While you're talking about that, my operation hat kind of comes on and I think, wow, that's amazing. But that must be a nightmare to service and clean. Oh, yeah. I can imagine the housekeeping team is quite, quite a large one. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, compared to other hotels, I don't know, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't know. But uh, it's, it is, it is, does come with the challenges because of the old, all the corridors and the um, the juxtapositions of the rooms and everything. So it does come with the challenges, but it's, you know, we manage it's, uh, we, we, we keep it clean and everything. I'm sure. the, big, the biggest challenge is actually car parking, but uh, there's a very narrow road that leads into the hotel that we sometimes park some cars, but it became too much of a nightmare that, and as, as a hotel grew bigger, we actually bought some spaces in a, uh, in a multi-story car park about a uh, five minute walk down the road. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And you, your sisters are both, you've got two sisters, don't you? And they're both involved. I was just going to say that. So the story of my life is I was born in the States. Uh, with my, I have a twin brother. His name is Alexander, Alex. I have an older brother. Uh, his name is Peter. My parents separated. Us brothers moved up with our mother to Sevilla, Spain. My mother remarried um, Ignacio, who's a Duke of Segorbe. My mother's also a Brazilian princess, Princesa Maria de Gloria Orleans Braganza. So I've also got Brazilian royalty amongst other royalties there. Uh, my father being Serbian and uh, there's Greek, there's uh, Danish, there's a bit of everything. Um, so my mother then uh, had two girls, two lovely girls. The eldest is Sol, four years younger than me, and then Luna, uh, six years younger than me. So two years difference between them. Um, Lovely girls, I mean, sisters, best friends. And uh, yeah, so Sol's now managing the hotel. She's, I think she, I mean, you could say she's, I want to say general manager, but she does a lot of the, uh, a lot of, operations and operations admin. that's it really and then luna is she's more of an artist and illustrator she does a lot of des- designs and stuff and she has some other projects on the side and she also runs a yoga class as well in the hotel on the roof of the, of the hotel beautiful location where we have a swimming pool on the roof that's open from like may onwards um it could even be open earlier but i think i think may is safe <laughs> yeah. it's, hot, it's hot in seville um yeah it's really hot in the summer especially but uh, the rest of the year it's 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 lovely and is that what encouraged you or inspired you rather to go and study hotel management? Yeah, so I I studied languages at university um, at UCL, graduated and went straight into finance. Uh, worked a couple of years, and this was just before the financial, uh, the great financial crisis of two thousand and eight. And I left my the the company I was working at to go into hospitality management in Switzerland. Why I decided to do that it was just because I wanted to do something different, and because there's hoteling, hoteling in my in my uh, in my blood, I guess um, that I thought it would be interesting. And actually, it was ended up being a very good decision uh, because Switzerland really um, they really drill you into being a little professional. Um, it's really it's a really really good school. This uh, hotel, hotel the Hotel Ecolier de Lausanne. They you have to be. You have to be suited and booted from morning to, to evening for the classes. And you, you learn everything from accounting, financing to HR to, um, to uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, cooking uh, as well, you know, housekeeping, the baking, housekeeping front, uh, office. front office, everything. Everything was geared towards hospitality management. But then I thought the skills were very interchangeable with the rest of the world. So when I well, finished, yeah, yeah, that's what we were saying. It's like a microcosm. Isn't microcosm, it? Yeah. exactly. So when I finished there, I then went to London to work at the Ritz Hotel for for just under a year, and working in their front office and then working in their sales and marketing department. But then I realized that I, I still had a passion for uh, for finance and macroeconomics, and I wanted to go back into finance. So I ended up back into finance, and I realized that the skills I picked up from hotelling from 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 Lausanne and from working the Ritz actually were really useful for uh, for finance. Um, Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, and tell us a little bit about working for the Ritz because I mean, that's pretty much I would say the most famous hotel in the world, especially the London location. I mean, the people you must have seen there, the experiences you must have had. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the highs and lows and what you you know took from that. Sure. It's, yeah, as you said, famous hotel really has a spectacular name. You have a lot of people wanting to uh, wanting to work there because it looks great on your CV. 
one of the reasons I wanted to go, but also because it's uh, close to, I didn't tell you that I lived, I lived in London most of my life. So it's, it's somewhere that's close to my heart. And yeah, it's, 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 it's a special hotel. Um, the rooms are, are beautiful. The hotel, the interior design is fantastic. It's done in Louis XIV style, really classical, beautiful uh, feel about it. The rooms, I mean, the, 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 the decor and furniture and stuff, it's really, it's really um, classical, as I said. The, when I was working there, they didn't have room uh, card, card keys. They had, um, they had proper old school keys that you would go down and leave with the concierge on the front desk. It was, re- it was really quite, had that beautiful old school touch to it. Um, it had quite a high turnover of, of guests because a lot of people would stay there just for one night for the experience. So you have a lot of a range of uh, different, um, different people from all over the world and also just English, uh, in, you know, people from, from the country just wanting to stay in the, in the hotel for one night. It's expensive, so they can only really afford one night. And so, there was, so it causes a bit of, uh, um, well, a bit of stress at the front office, as, as, I, as I found Yeah, huge out. daily upheaval of what's Dude, going on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Then you do get a lot of the regulars staying there, people staying there for, for weeks, even months as well, and people staying there for, for business, for leisure, for everything. And the you know the range of the rooms were some of the rooms some of those suites were beautiful looking suites the incredible suites that especially that they built a new part behind I see they built they they took over a building like like almost uh, like attached it's, yeah it's, it's attached onto the green park side of, of the hotel and they made a couple of big suites there they go for a very for a very pricey number but uh, you know London attracts that sort of clientele <laughs> absolutely yeah and I'm sure you I'm sorry really I should people. say that was really famous about Grits Hotel is the afternoon tea so if you're ever manning the phones half the calls were for for uh, for booking making reservations at the uh, afternoon tea at the ritz hotel which you have about five or six slots during the day and during the week it's uh, some days it's you have to book maybe two or three months in advance for some slots <laughs> wow wow imagine and um and i bet you met some really interesting people there um could you share any fun experiences with us without mentioning names but um <laughs> Let's see. Um, not, not, nothing actually like that happened with any guests. I was actually quite. It was actually quite boring on that front. But nothing really. <laughs> no. Maybe they were just all so so yeah. exceptional that it all became the ordinary. Yeah, that's, that, that's it, really. No, there was fun things happening behind the scenes. You know, there was always jokes and stuff like that. But nothing really. Nothing that really stood out. No. And how, and how I wish, was, I wish, yeah, I wish I had something funny to share there. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. How was the the team atmosphere? I mean, I imagine that everybody working in such an organization feels a lot of pride. How did you feel when you were working there? Did you um, enjoy working with your the colleagues and teammates? Yeah, there was there was a sense of pride there. You had to wear a uniform and went working the front desk. So it's very old school uniform, like almost like a like a morning suit. So that yeah, it was, it was interesting because you weren't really allowed to leave the premises wearing that morning suit. But sometimes I would go slip out to buy something, and people would give you give you give you either funny funny looks or respectful looks. But <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's uh, there is as I said uh, when I when I applied to work at the Ritz Hotel. That's one of the reasons because that's the Ritz Hotel, and they have some really interesting people there, some really high caliber um, employees there. Uh, and I thought the most uh, the most impressive were the guys working the concierge, and these guys have been working there for for like thirty forty years. And I mean the way they run it, they just they they know they have connections to every part of London. So you people go there. It's like I want to get tickets for this. I want to go to this. I want to go to that restaurant. I want to go to this theater. I want to visit this. And they just be like they remember everything. Like they're like cab drivers, where uh, black cab drivers, where just they have huge brains for remembering stuff. For, for and they would just Amazing. be calling and stuff, and then they would organize it. It's it's fantastic with with a sense of humor. So That's a lot of so yeah, a lot of jokes and stuff is people were coming. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good times are coming from them. Well, just proving the point that it's all about the experience. Exactly. I mean, there's many places that have amazing suites and charge a lot for it, but it's the experience that people want and the concierge, as well as the rest of the team, definitely provide that Correct. along with high tea. Um, so tell us a little bit more about um, your travels because you're someone who, yeah, you were born in America, you've lived most of your life in London, you now live in Serbia, and you've been traveling a lot in your life. So when you travel and having the background that you have 
with hotels. What do you look for in a hotel? Like what's important to you? How do you choose a hotel to stay in? I look for the number one thing. I look for something uh, say authentic or something that's, that's uh, similar to the style of the city. So similar like my mother's hotel, my mother's and fa- stepfather's hotel in Spain, in Sevilla. I look for something that's, uh, that's not so generic and something with a bit of style, a bit of authenticity, a bit of, uh, a bit yeah, of character uniqueness. that's local, uniqueness that's local. Obviously, that's not easy to do, but that's what I look for first. Uh, the next thing I would look for is, the, is um, I guess, uh, something that looks something that's uh, not too pricey. <laughs> it looks, and you know, that gets good reviews, like everyone else does. But I would always choose the one that 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 has the most the most authentic look about it. Like yeah. for me, traveling around, I mean, I've I've stayed in many many hotels, and for me, I think that my favorite hotel is this hotel in. Trebinje, which is in Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's in um, it's in the uh, Serbian parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is called the Republika Srpska. It's an autonomous part of Ser- of of Bosnia of uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, and they have a beautiful city called Trebinje, which is like a Mediterranean city surrounded by big hills or like mountains. Beautiful climate, great food, really nice life. That a lot of people go to retire there, and it's a great summer city as well. There's a beautiful hotel called Hotel Platani, which is situated in one of the center squares there. And it's nothing special in terms of the luxury and stuff, but it's just, as I said, authentic. It has a very famous restaurant and cafe. I mean, famous. It's just very, just does everything right and simple. And the hotel, it's a four-star hotel, but nothing too fancy. Everything works, everything functions. And this, and it's just all about the experience of being in this, sitting out in the cafe, watching life walk, uh, pass by there. It's really good for children. You can let Steph and we let our son play in the square with other children and stuff. And you, don't, you feel safe. It feels really, really comfortable there. And I like that sort of style, that sort of feeling, that uh, that service you get, the, the staff and the waiters there. They just, um, they're very relaxed and stuff. And, you know, it's everything's done done in a very homey, comfortable way. Part of say, yeah, it's just really, so it's, important. Yeah. yeah, to make you feel safe and authentic and genuine. Yeah, yeah, I, I have couldn't agree more. Stayed in luxury hotels before, and I think probably one of the most beautiful hotels I stayed in was at the Uday, at the sorry, the um, Palace in Uday, the Lake Palace Hotel in Udaipur, which is the. Uh, Near the Lake Palace, uh, this is part of the, oh, I forget the collection. Um, uh, I forgot the name of the collection. Beautiful hotel. It was, I've never seen it, uh, absolutely stunning and fantastic service as well, but almost too luxury. <laughs> uh, what was it? No, it's not the, uh, oh, it'll come back to me later. It's okay. Um, um, you mentioned to me when you were here, really, really interesting facts about your father and uh, where yes. your father was born. So please tell us so a little bit about that. My father, uh, Prince Alexander, or Crown Prince Alexander, he was born in London, but he was born in the hotel in Claridge's room 212. So Amazing. when my, fa- my grandfather, King Peter II, the last king of, Serbia, of Yugoslavia, was exiled, him and his uh, his wife, Queen Alexandra, they moved around and they ended up in London and they took residence in the Claridge's Hotel uh, for a few months where, where my father was born. And Churchill designated the room 212 where she was where they were staying as as Yugoslav territory for the for the day. <laughs> Which is also interesting because at the end of the day, um, he doesn't have a birth certificate because Yugoslavia was uh, Tito, General Tito, did not recognize it as Serbian, as Yugoslav territory at the time, so didn't want to recognize my father's birth. And the Brits didn't want to give, uh, didn't give a birth certificate because it was apparently Yugoslav territory. <laughs> so there's Amazing. a, bit of a u- bit of a unique situation there. <laughs> unique to say the least. And the room, 212? 212, yeah. It has, yeah. I, I believe it has a plaque in there, but it's a beautiful room. It's, uh, it's a suite. And yeah, it's, uh, Claridge's is a wonderful hotel, yeah. That's so good. That's so good. So tell us a little bit about your marathon training. Oh, so this yeah. is not to do with hotels, but it's still really interesting to see how anybody can do this and why and what was it that made you want to run marathons in the first place? I've run two marathons, the first one in Athens and the second one in London. Athens really was an uphill struggle for survival and it was hot and it was yeah it was slightly uphill most of the way and I that was tough that was really tough I didn't do didn't clock a very good time I um I I I could have trained better 
I ran a few half marathons in between that as well. But then I decided to run London in, um, a few years later, and I clocked a much better time. I took this, the training much more, much more seriously. And it's a much easier course. Um, more so what, people. What made you want to do it? What made me, that's, yeah, you asked that. Sorry. Uh, what made me want to do it is I like the challenge. I wanted to say I completed the marathon and I wanted to say I completed the marathon in under four hours. And I wanted, and it's also a good way to getting fit. But I have some uh, recommendations. It's like it does take over your life. And if you have children, it, I wouldn't recommend it. I didn't, I did it when I was single and I found it really took over my life. But I felt great because I was fit. I, uh, I could, I, I might, when, when you're that fit and stuff, I was working hard in London. I could concentrate better and everything. It was, uh, it was actually a really good experience, but it was hard to maintain. But finishing it was, was, was quite, quite, a, uh, quite a feeling. So you're obviously quite a determined character. Would you say that that also helped you in your hotel life when you were working yeah. in hotels? Yeah, because hotel life, working in front office is 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 can be very difficult, very challenging. You know, you have to do a lot of things, different things at one time. You have to, you know, when people are queuing up and you have to do multiple different tasks, one after the other, it's 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 a challenge. And I and I like that challenge. I, I took it over to my financial, to my job in the city as well, which requires a lot of concentration a lot of and sometimes you have people you know wanting to you're giving a lot of work here and there so you have to prioritize things and power you know prioritizing things is, is not easy so you have to i think you know it, it, it's yeah i was i'm deter, i like i'm determined to get the, the, the task done and do it do it well so yeah i guess it helps <laughs> i think it must do for sure and I know that you've lived in Cyprus for a little bit of time, at least, and you love coming here, I hope, at least on holidays. I know that you were at our hotel last time. So tell us a little bit about your connection to Cyprus and sure. what drew you to Cyprus and why you like it. Sure. Um, I moved to Cyprus to work at a hedge fund in Limassol, so where, where you are right now. I lived there for just about a year, just over a year, actually. That was in 2011 to 2012. And I was offered the job to go there and it was for ICOS working for Elena Ambrosiadu and it was really exciting. It was still fresh from, um, more or less fresh from, from, from my hotel experiences from, from, from the Ritz. So I was still gaining a lot of experience there. But I love Cyprus. I love Limassol. I, was, uh, I found a really good time to, to focus on myself because I moved here by myself and uh, I got to experience the different seasons of Lima Salt, experience the different seasonal foods that they have to offer. I got to swim in the sea almost every day where I go swimming even from winter and obviously in the summer, see the different people, the, se the seasonality of, 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 of the crowds and also got to visit the, uh, the Trudos Mountains as well, which was beautiful. I got to travel around to places like you know, Paphos. I went to Nicosia. I went to northern Cyprus. I went to um, Ayanapa. And it's, it's beautiful. There's so much, so much to offer there. Um, that was, yes. Yeah, so I was sad to leave, but I did want to go back to London. I thought that uh, being young at the time, I, that I wanted to have a bit more, uh, bit more uh, urban life. Uh, but coming back to Cyprus now for holiday, we decided, my wife and I decided to come back to Cyprus on holiday. We have a mutual friend of ours and uh, he says, you know, come, come to Cyprus. I have a friend who has a beautiful hotel next to the hotel that we, I used to have. And so, yeah, we ended up uh, going to your beautiful hotel, San Rafael, and uh, we had an amazing time. Aww. Stayed there for a couple of weeks, amazing food, great Great, uh, great location on the beach. Our son Stefan was was uh, swimming in the beach in the swimming pool, and then we had a great kids club. So fantastic for children. He loved going to the kids club. Um, yeah, it was it was it was fun. So we're definitely coming back. Stefan, and it was our pleasure. Stefan still really. talks about it. <laughs> oh, and so does, so does Barissa. She's like, "Where's my friend? My friend." <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. Well, Philip, we can't wait to have you back. Thank you so much for being with us and for sharing your stories and um, some of your really interesting experiences. Uh, before we um, end this podcast, I'm going to pick a random question from the oh, hat yeah, of course. <laughs> that um, yeah, some of our team have um, put together. So let's see which one you're going to get. And um, okay, uh, well, I think that should be easy. I don't know if I like the answer to this one. It is, what's your favorite food? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be vegan. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's a good question. <laughs> I do like meat. <laughs> no, I know, I know. We had this conversation when you were here. Yeah, I do like beef. I do like beef. Um, I got to say, but I do like fish as well. So I know that's not really vegan, but probably... Maybe something um, Serbian or... Yeah, well, that's... Uh, I like... Uh, one of my favorite foods is... Uh, in Serbia, actually, my favorite food is... Um, ooh, sarma, which is... Which What's is that? sarma is is wrapped cabbage like um, pickled like uh, pick not pickled but like cabbage leaves have been kind of pickled, and then they they wrap they wrap uh, you wrap pork you can also do a vegetarian a, a vegan version of this but they can wrap pork like minced pork in there and cook that and it's a, with a nice sauce and it's a very good winter dish. And oh, such, nice! It was quite, quite healthy. Similar, yeah, similar dish in, in Lebanon. Yes, yeah, exactly. which yeah. we make. Yeah, you can veganize it really easily. Yeah, exactly. Well, I know that next time you're here, you're coming over to mine, and I'm cooking that for you. The, the vegan version. Uh, the vegan which version. It's just as good. It's I mean, it's about it's about <laughs> the, the way the combination of the of the of the cabbage and the the mince or whatever it is. Yeah, and the sauce. Nice, yeah, the sauce. Yeah, you have it with some uh, potatoes or rice, but I think mainly with potatoes with uh, mashed potatoes. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, amazing! Thank you so much, Philip. Thank you for for being you, here, Dara. for sharing your stories, and I can't wait to see you soon. Looking forward to coming back to Cyprus. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.